Hi, I'm Katie, and this is the 24th episode of Ornamentations, which will feature new finishes, some new finishing methods, new starts, and new haul. So much exciting stuff today. So I hope you've got your stitching and you're ready for a good one because I'm really excited. If this is your first time joining me, this is a channel about my varied adventures in stitching and finishing, ranging from cross stitch to surface embroidery to beading to other crafts that I like to poke my nose into, although today's episode will really be all about cross stitch and cross stitch finishing. So I'm coming to you today a week late because I was down with the flu. I was so sick, I did not even see for a week which is oh boy really 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 sick but I'm feeling much better now I am still a little bit tired so I hope you'll forgive me if I'm a little all over the place today and I will be filming again in one more week to get back on my regular finishing my regular filming schedule because we have a kit launch next Tuesday, July 19th, which will be Seasons of the Heart Winter. I'll know more about that later. But I wanted to come on here today and update you on everything that is accumulated because otherwise next week's episode would be really, really long. Other things that have happened since I saw you last Part two of the Specialty Thread Tutorial, A Practical on Silk Conversions is up. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. And it covers my original silk conversion for Plum Street Sampler's Blue Skin going from chart and ground linen to a complete stitched conversion. Talks about how and why I chose all of the threads I did and covers my thought process in making those decisions. I hope you'll find it helpful. And also, Katie's Greens has been a smashing success. Thank you so much to everybody who bought a box, but there are still just a few boxes left if you're interested. There are only three full boxes with the full set of silk wrapped pearl, and then a couple partials with the, that are missing the last tiny silk wrap pearl. You are honestly going to want the whole set of silk wrap pearl after you see what I've been up to this week. So a uh, link is in the description and the full spiel on Katie's greens and why they're special is in my previous floss tube number 23. But silk wrap pearl is what I've been having a lot of fun with and finishing lately and a tutorial on it will be coming as a thank you to everybody who bought Katie's greens. Once I get the method fully refined, I'm experimenting with it right now and still have a few things to iron out so that I can give you a detailed and focused tutorial that really shows you how to use the thread. But if you bought Katie's greens and aren't sure how to use these, or if you're thinking about Katie's greens, that is coming. And then another question that arose in the comments recent, actually not just after the last episode, is Katie's mom. So I do talk about her a lot. She's a very special person and a big influence in my stitching life, as you know, I've mentioned from my very first episode. And people have been asking if she could come on my floss tube as a guest. So I talked to her about it. And the answer was yes, but she doesn't want to come on with a t without a topic, which admittedly I think is a good idea because otherwise it would be one of those insular mother-daughter conversations where we look at each other and giggle and share inside jokes. It wouldn't be a good floss tube. So basically my question to you today is would you like a very special floss tube with my mom as my special guest? And if so, what do you want to hear about or know from my mom? Her only idea was to come on and tell embarrassing stories about me, which I think we can skip because Katie's teenage years, mm, not a good time. Please think of other questions to save me from that. Actually, she's not coming on if that's the only topic that's proposed. So yeah, suggestions would be highly appreciated. 
But with that, let's get to finishes because I have really cool stuff to share. So the first to finish is an FFO of, a fin of stitching that I showed you in the last episode, which was Modern Folk Embroidery Underneath the Christmas Tree. And in the last episode, I showed you the shape I was thinking about and why I didn't like it. And a lot of my genius commenters suggested something that hadn't even occurred to me, which was a teardrop. And that turned out to be the absolute perfect shape because it follows the lines of the stitch and it does have just a little bit of uneven negative space here at the sides, but not so much that it's distracting. It fits. It looks right. It's great. And thank you to everybody who suggested it because it turned out to be perfect, although the finish on this isn't perfect. This was one of those, I swear, everything that could go wrong on this did go wrong. And I'm telling you this not to complain, but to illustrate that finishing can actually be more forgiving than you think. You can make a million mistakes and still save it, especially if it's a Christmas ornament. I think it's one of the reasons I love Christmas stitching so much. It's forgiving because you're massing ornaments on a tree and the little individual blips with one of the pieces you don't really notice. So what's wrong with this ornament? Just a quick recap. So normally when I'm doing a flat finish, so I followed Mona Pfeiffer's tutorial and I'll link that in the description. They're excellent if you haven't done this style of finish before. I pin my stitching into place on the shape so that it doesn't shift and I'll insert a photo here of what that looks like and the reason I usually do that is aptly illustrated here because I skipped that on this ornament and it did shift. It's not lined up at the top. It's a little skewed. It's not straight on the teardrop, which you don't really notice at a distance, but when you're actually doing the stitching and having to stare at that not aligned top, oh, it was driving me nuts. I was just, oh! And the reason I couldn't um, adjust it is the next thing that went wrong. I cut notches into the fabric so that it would turn nicely. And I kept my notches too deep. I could not move this shape at all. And in fact, I had several places where you could see the linen starting to ravel. The most visible one is here at the top. I'm not sure if that's really gonna focus, but trust me, it's there. And if you're looking at the top here, you can also see that the beads on either side are not evenly spaced. That's because I put the beads over every spot where I had little raveling edge threads. So it made for some evenly spaced beads. Although again, hold this up at a distance, you cannot see that at all, and it's great. So, oh, I finally got past all that. The back shape didn't fit so well. You can see it's, but you know, it's the back. No one has to see that, whatever, who cares? And then I finally settled on the right bead, which here was a four millimeter briolette anchored at the top by a size 15 OC bead, which I think is beautiful, beautiful edging. Look at that, isn't that great? I think it really adds a lot. I'm really pleased and I'm gonna use that trick again. <laughs> so I finally get to pass all my problems. I'm stitching on the briolettes. I'm like really in a groove and then I ran out of beads. I was ready to throw this thing across the room. But I ordered more beads. They came. I finished this ornament. I'm glad to be done with it, but it's a good object lesson in finishing. Like you can do a whole lot of screw ups and you can still save it. You just have to be a little flexible in what you do. So rethink your edge treatment, reposition your piece, whatever. There are usually ways to save whatever you do in your finishing. So don't be scared because, you know, whatever you do, there's a way to undo it. And then my next finish is what I'm so excited about. So this is the Maiden Voyage of Silk Wrapped Pearl and Cross Stitch Finishing. So this is one of my stitches from Through the Bitter Frost and Snow by Modern Folk Embroidery. I decided to stitch these individually as Christmas ornaments and my idea after Underneath the Christmas Tree, which is in my favorite bright red 779, was that I would do like 
a gradient of reds in coordinating ornaments. So I started with 779 and then I went all the way to the dark end of the spectrum, which is 2646 Goblins on 38 count Fuller's Teasel. And then I decided to start playing with silk wrapped pearl for my finishing technique. So I've just got little three eighths of an inch cut worked as loops um, just like I did on the beaded looped edging tutorial and then in the center of each loop I have anchored it with a round bead. I think that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that and I think you could do a lot with this. You could make the loops bigger or smaller. You could space them closer together or further apart. You could put contrasting beads in between them instead of inside the loops. There's a lot you can do and I'm going to be experimenting a lot with this in the future, especially with Katie's greens. I'm going to stitch some green ornaments and have a lot of fun with that. I've already got crystal colors picked out. And then um, a tutorial will be coming. My spacing is not completely even here. I'm still kind of figuring out what exact length and the spacing. So once I have fully refined my process, I will get working on a tutorial for you so that if you bought Katie's Greens or even if you're just interested in Silk Wrapped Pearl, you too can give this a try. And I've done this here on a hard edge ornament, but I think it will work equally well with a pillow. So I'm really excited to do that. And then the next ornament I stitched, it went back to 45 count foxtail millet to another motif from Through the Bitter Frost and Snow, the center one here, and in kind of a more medium red. This is a Safine. So yeah, lighter than the 2646, but darker than 779. This is beautiful. I love this. And there's a big error on here. But and just before the stitch detectives start on me, I do know where it is. I just decided not to do anything about it. Let me find it. It does take me a second. Oh, okay. It's here. I'm off by one. And I know why and how I'm off by one, but it means that this does not line up. It's jagged. However, hold it back. I think it's just fine. And so I decided to leave it. I've already backed it for finishing. And then I am going to finish this again with silk wrapped pearl around the edges. I've got a slightly lighter color that will coordinate beautifully with this silk. And then I might try looping silk chenille in between the loops instead of using a bead. We'll see. New Frontier, I really am so excited about this. I think it's gonna be really fun because the thing about Silk Rock Pearl is you get this great look without actually doing any work. So Silk Rock Pearl, if you missed last episode, is silk covered wire that's been coiled. It looks like a bullion knot, but without the work of a bullion knot, which I love because that's like the one stitch that I really struggle with. I can do them, I just hate them. So I am a big fan of silk wrap pearl for that reason. It gets me out of having to do my least liked stitch. And I hadn't previously thought of a use for it in cross stitch, but then edging hit me and now I'm just in love with this idea cannot get enough of it so you'll be seeing again you'll be seeing it in the next episode i hope i will manage the finishing on this and then i think i'll work a few more red ones from through the bitter frost and snow and then we're gonna start on greens because i have crystal pairings for all of these and oh boy am i excited i can't wait to get started this is gonna be fun so that's bottom folk embroidery and then another reason why I decided to just live with this the way it is, this, even though there's a mistake, is the new haul. But we'll talk about that in a second because I have one more finish to show you 
before we get to haul, and that is Brenda Gervais' Seasons of the Heart Winter, shown here. And then this is my finish, which is the next floss tube kit that will be available the morning of Tuesday, July 19th on my website. So we'll talk a little more about some of the specifics of my choices in the next episode, just because I have so much to get through today. But as you can see next to the model stitch, this is a brighter colorway. I did carry the border all of the way across and then I left out a few elements. I left out the bird because it never looks like a bird to me. It just looks like kind of an oddly shit triangle with some stuff poking out of it. But you've got a red in here so you can do the bird if you want. And then I left out the trees. I didn't think they were necessary. You probably could use this third tree up here, but I was just filling in with extra snowflakes and really went to town. I did do the trick of um, combining Accentuate with Suasurfine. It's incredibly sparkly in person. You cannot see it on video at all. So I'm going to insert a couple of photos that I think show it a little better. But again, this is an effect you can only truly ever appreciate in person. So if you buy the kit, you're going to have a really fabulous surprise coming to you because it looks amazing. And I am just so thrilled with it. So this looks like a lot of kind of empty negative space on camera because the sparkle isn't showing up. But in person, you've got the sparkle jumping out on you and that's what fills that area. So the colors are definitely brighter, but I think that works. Um, it just, it looks so happy to me. It looks vibrant and luscious and Christmas in July. It's, it's the perfect Christmas in July stitch because it's so bright and happy. And I just think those are some really luscious colors. And then I've done again, the silk um, satin backing, which is included in the kit. And then there will be a limited number of beading finishing kits available. So I will take as many orders as I receive on the full kit without the beads, but I could only get so many crystal beads. So those are limited. If you want to be sure to get a finishing kit and the finishing kit is just beads um, the beading thread and then a beading needle to do the beaded loop edging for this piece. Make sure that you're signed up for the ornamentations mailing list because those are limited in quantity. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the details on the next episode when the kit actually launches, but that's coming on July 19th and I hope that you will love Seasons of the Heart winter as much as I have because Oh, this was fun. This is just one of those cases where the colors were so beautiful that it just made me happy when I was stitching it. I don't think there's a better way to say it than that, really. It was just like a smiling, happy stitch because the silks were just so vibrant and luscious and I enjoyed them so much. And then these aren't new finishes, but I picked up Peppermint Pals from Needle in a Haystack. It came back from the attic with the Simple Harmony box. And um, Simple Harmony box, by the way, is on display at Needle in a Haystack and will be there at least through the end of July, possibly through August. We haven't discussed an exact return date yet. So if you're in the Bay Area and you would like to see the Simple Harmony box, it's at Needle in a Haystack. Call them and make an appointment. On the Simple Harmony Stitch Along, by the way, the third prize, which is the set of antique needlework tools, a mother of pearl thread winder, and then a bone knitting, a crochet hook, crochet hook, lane tool, and needle case is still available. I am excited to see the third finish. So email or DM me with your finish to claim the third prize for the Simple Harmony Stitch Along. But as I was looking at um, Peppermint Pals, I was interested in the contrast between 
that in my latest Faded Pepper and Dream, and I thought you might be interested to see it as well. So this is my beaded spiral rope trim. Tutorial is up and I'll link it in the description with just red and white beads to give the striped look. And then this is the smaller scale where I've just strung uh, red and white beads on wire and couched it down the edge. So they're both peppermint trim, but it gives a very different look because of the different scale of the beaded edging. This really suits peppermint pals. I think this suits candy cane wishes. So just kind of a note on scale and the, the different things you can do with beads. I'm always discovering new things and it makes finishing really exciting and fun, I think. So stay tuned to see what all I do with that. And while I was at Needle in a Haystack, I did get some more haul. And then I had some come in the mail. So this is our little haul section. I had a conversion in mind for the next floss tube kit, which is not coming soon. That'll be at the end of the summer, early fall. It's going to be a fall seasonal stitch. I was a little weak on some of the shades, so I was trying to fill out a conversion. I didn't buy all of these. Some of these I had. Mostly what I bought were oranges. So these are the threads I'm looking at. This isn't a complete conversion. I haven't stitched yet. I'm not going to need all of these oranges. These are just the shades that I'm looking at. These definitely, and then I think probably three of the oranges. I'm just not sure which ones yet. So fall colors as I look forward to fall stitching. I know it's Christmas in July and I'm already talking about fall. I need to get a grip, but Needle in a haystack isn't actually that close to me. Crossing bridges is a pain. So when I'm there, I take full advantage. I plan everything I'm thinking about stitching. I make a list and I buy accordingly. So it was actually time to think about fall. And I think, oh, isn't that gonna be a fun project? I'm looking at that and I'm just kind of itching to start. Well, I'm itching to start all of the things. I have so much here and I just cannot pick where to go next and then i was also thinking about sampler september which i will be joining and i've picked my chart i looked at that i thought it was a little large and i want it to be a pillow finish so i've talked about brenda sampler stitcher's finish of hats annie morris as a pillow and how much i loved that especially the beaded edging but i also loved the sampler as pillow thing and then if you saw brenda and laura this weekend laura sent a small sampler off to joy and got back a pillow finish so that really just was like yes that's it that's what's up i'm gonna do my sampler for sampler september as a pillow finish, however, for it not to be like a giant throw pillow, it needs to be 5363, so Swasserveine, which I'm pretty weak on, so I went to town. I need all nice stack. And I actually don't think I need half of these colors for my project, but you know, when in Rome or when it needs stack take advantage of the fact that you can actually see colors in front of you and go wait yeah silk is never wasted i'll always find a use for it so i had a lot of fun and mm, aren't those luscious so these are focused on areas where i thought i was weak basically that's why the yellows yellow is a really specific shade you always need exactly the right yellow so that's really why there are a million yellows there. There are I think two or three in the sampler I chose and I wanna make sure that I have the right yellow. And then, cause we're not done with haul, excitement showed up in the mail. I mean, excitement. I am just itching. Of course, it showed up in the mail. I was in the middle of something else. I went all squirrel. I dropped everything. I started pulling charts and figuring out what to stitch. And then of course I got the flu because of course I did. I mean, <laughs> it's just the way life works. But what showed up in the mail was new colors 
of linen, which is just, oh, talk about Christmas in July. It happened, Christmas happened, it came. It was in fact in July. And we will be taking a look at some of the new linen colors and what I'm going to be doing with them because, I'm sorry, excuse me. I just, oh, I got these in my hot little hands. I was like, oh my God, what, what can I stitch with these? I want to stitch all the things and stitch all the total squirrel brain, which I'm not really particularly prone to, but this just sparked an absolute creative frenzy. So these are all legacy linen and these are the new colors, which... I don't think most LNS have them in stock yet, so you might have to call an order. But the first is this oh, variegated gray. It's in two, uh, yeah, that's it. It's in two counts, so 45 counts Scriptorium. Isn't that a great name? I love that name. It's so geeky and fabulous. And then 38 count Cloister Cream. And 38 count is what I will be stitching Brenda Gervais bells of Christmas on. I've already picked the threads. Um, this, by the way, is going to be a kit later in the year, closer to Christmas. So if you are thinking of stitching bells of Christmas and you haven't yet, you might want to hold off on that because, oh boy, do I have ideas. I have a finishing on that idea on this actually, which is why it's going to be a kit later in the year. I have some things to figure out with that. I'm not exactly sure on logistics, but so that's what's going on with Cloister Cream and Scriptorium. And then the next one, which be still my heart is 38 count Irish coffee. As you can see, I've already cut into this one. That didn't last long. And Irish coffee feels a real, feels a real need in the lines. The previous darkest kind of like neutral was Fuller's Tea, which I've got here on Christmas tea. And oh, I wish I hadn't already stitched this because I would drop this conversion on Irish coffee and Look at how much that teacup would pop off if you were using this instead. I kind of want to stitch it over. I mean, I'm not going to stitch it over. I stitched it once. That was enough. But yeah, I do actually want to stitch it over. The other thing I think would be great with this is this bodacious trim that I still haven't found a use for. I think I just found a use for that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's beautiful with Fuller's Teasel, but it's a little too bold. Irish coffee, meant to be, meant to be. So my first thought on that was Scarlet Letter, Be Merry and Bright. So this is an older chart and they're like 50s shiny bright ornaments, but they're not in shiny bright colors. So my idea was to put this on Irish coffee, which could really stand up to some brights and then do shiny bright colors for the shiny bright ornaments and then add beads and sparkles and italics. I'm excited. I'm not sure if the excitement is showing through because I'm still dead from the flu, but ooh, excited. And then if you haven't stitched Christmas tea, I'd use my silk conversion and put it on Irish coffee or other, I mean, this isn't really the season, but Tulip Festival. Oh, that's great. So, Irish coffee. I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited about all of these, but some of these just caused an actual frenzy. And then my first thought on Irish coffee was actually Thistle House. So, um, Rachel Needle and Flax talked about, sorry, this got crazy glare, talked about this recently and mentioned that the lady looks like the Bride of Frankenstein. I've really got to agree with her there. So what I would do with this would actually be to leave the lady out and do a little recharting so that you've got thistles going down both sides, flanking the house. This is for a larger project that we'll be talking about a little later. I've had an idea and my first thought was that this little house would just, oh my God, that would pop off Irish coffee. And I was, I mean, I 
almost had the scissors out and then I thought to slow down a hot second and look at the threads I had picked for it because it's usually a good idea to check if the threads you want to use work with your ground fabric. And the problem is, so I think if you were using the greens that are called for here, or even the, anything that's close to the greens that are called for here, the olive greens, it would be great. The greens I was looking at, I don't think play quite as well. Although honestly, I look at this on camera and that does pop. Maybe I'll have to actually try this out. Maybe I'll try this out. I don't know, when I looked at it in person, I did not think that that was working, but I can see this on camera and that does look beautiful. So another good object lesson, don't always rely on your eyes. Lay your stuff out, take a picture of it, and then look at the photo because that can really clarify your thoughts. So I don't know, maybe I am going to do Thistle House on Irish Coffee. I had been thinking that the threads I wanted to use would work better on Russian tea cake, but hmm. Okay, now I'm torn. So long story short, what I was thinking is that the greens I wanted to use, which were not olives, wouldn't work with the ground I wanted to use and that I was going to have to choose greens or ground and of course greens won. Now maybe I'm thinking I'm still going to use Irish coffee. So uh, stay tuned on that actually. Live rev rev revolutions happening on horse too. Wow. And then there are two darks and these are the absolute pick of the litter in my opinion. Sea Serpent. Oh, beautiful. I love a good gray. My mom always teases me that I never have black or gray. And it's like, well, because black and gray are gray colors that make everything look good, like my hair. But um, yeah, I love that. And then Druid Blue. Look at that. I don't even have words for that. I am obsessed. You guys should order your Druid Blue before I buy it all because, yeah, this was really what caused the frenzy. When I saw the other ones, I knew what charts I wanted to use them with, but Druid Blue was like a pull everything out, rifle through them, and really have a think because, hmm, this one took some thinking. What would look good on a fabric this luscious? So my first thought was winter salt boxes. So like these, but a night scene. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be so cool. And then this joyous season. Got a lot of plum straight today. I think that would be glorious. And then totally out of left field. And this I think would work equally well on Sea Serpent or Druid Blue, so I'm not really sure which. Vote. Vote in the comments, please. Fractor Flowers. Beautiful. So I have already started stitching one of the charts I have showed you today on one of the linens, if you want to guess guess and I'll show you what I started in next week's episode. I've held it just to make sure we have plenty to talk about since I'm filming on consecutive weeks but oh new linens it's Christmas I'm so excited it just it really just made me feel joyous and excited and like I want to stitch all of the things and I actually put them in a bag, drove over from my mother's house, and we had a big like paw through all the linens. Ooh, that's pretty, ooh, that's pretty. Oh my gosh, what are you gonna do on this? What would you do on that? We had a big confab, because, oh, I'm a dweeb, but you know, that's fine. That's fine, I'm okay with being myself. So what I will finish up with today is a couple of questions and also a call for the giveaway winner. Kelly McD, who is the winner of the Marie Antoinette 2000 subscriber giveaway. I still have not heard from you. So if you do not contact me, you have until 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on July 18th 
to give me your mailing address or I will be drawing in time for the next floss tube. So we may have a new giveaway winner in the next episode. We are definitely going to have some new giveaways as well as the next floss tube kit and some new starts and just general craziness, but there's that. And then I also got a couple questions that I would like to answer just because these are topics that have come up before, but you know, if one person asks it, usually there are multiple people having the same thought. So the first question was, what is surface embroidery? Because in the last episode, I said that Katie's brains were geared more towards surface embroidery. Sorry, I've got stuff everywhere and it's starting to fall off the couch. So, surface embroidery is just a catch-all term for any kind of embroidery that's not counted and worked off the chart. So, this is an example of surface embroidery, although more elaborate surface embroidery, but it can mean basically anything as long as it's not charted. Um, I have heard it referred to elsewhere on Floss Tube as freehand embroidery. I think that's a bit of a misnomer just because it makes it sound a lot more difficult than it is. You're never working freehand in surface embroidery because there's always, in my experience at least, a design on the fabric. So in cross stitch you have a chart to tell you where to stitch. In surface embroidery you have a design that gets transferred onto the ground fabric and then you're filling in. It's way more paint by numbers than drawing with needle and thread, for example. So uh, that's why I use surface embroidery. It's just the term I was taught. There may be another better term. If you have suggestions, please tell me in the comments. I'll probably still use surface embroidery just because that's the term I learned for it, but it has multiple names basically. And then the second question I got is what is Cabinet of Curiosities because I also said when talking about Kitty Screens that these were all colors outside the Cabinet of Curiosities historic color range. Cabinet of Curiosities is the singular thing that formed me as a stitcher basically. Cabinet of Curiosities is a course taught by Thistle Threads, Trisha Nguyen, and I came across it when I was a baby stitcher just figuring out what end of a needle to thread and um, I jumped in because I didn't know any better. <laughs> you know, that was stupid but it also started me on the stitching adventure of my life so maybe not so stupid. Cabinet of Curiosities is an in-depth exploration of 17th century historic embroidered cabinets or caskets, which are elaborate embroidered boxes stitched by schoolgirls. It was usually their culminating project after their sampler that have really elaborate interiors, as seen here on the wonderful netbook, English Embroidery twix start in nature. There's an authorized PDF download for this book because the actual hard copy is long out of print and super expensive on the secondary market. But um, I'll link that. I've linked it before, but if you don't have it, download it because this is an incredible book full of so much eye candy. It's a great place to start if you think you might be interested in caskets and you just want to see what it's about. So Cabinet of Curiosities is all things caskets, the history, the making, the materials. It was my first foray into silk thread and that's really why I'm so loyal to Avera Soi because that was what I started with. Basically, um, I started with the best. They were the COC materials and after I had worked with that, there was no going back. I think I said that in a specialty thread tutorial, but that's really... It started me with stitching, it started me with materials, it was just, it was the thing that shaped me as a stitcher. And I am still actually stitching caskets of my own, and the uh, casket I have as a whip right now, we'll actually be checking in with that on the next episode. So stay tuned for that, I will have a brief discussion of where I'm at with my very own casket. I've had some exciting progress on that piece. And then, so next week, 
because I'll be coming back to you in one week on Tuesday, July 19th. We will have the launch of the kit for Seasons of the Heart Winter. I'll be showing you the thread, the kit materials. We'll be talking a little bit about my choices here and all of the details on the winter kit. We will have some more exciting embellishments. I'll be playing a little more with some finishes an update on the Marie Antoinette sewing box on my casket and we'll have a few giveaways as well so please join me for that we're having a back-to-back -back floss tube excitement mania for Christmas in July basically and until then happy stitching